Hello, Blake Rudis here with EverydayHDR.com and HDRInsider.com. And today I want to talk to you about two of the most powerful tools in Photoshop, and those are the mask and the clipping mask. Now, I did a tutorial for Topaz Labs. It was a, a compositing tutorial, and I did a lot of masking and clipping masks, and I lost a lot of people, I think. Um, they were they still stuck around for the webinar, but I think they were kind of confused with how the masks and clipping masks work. So I figured, what better way than to show how to use masks and clipping masks than right here in an Everyday HDR tutorial. So right in front of you here, we have Blake Rudis' photo. Now, it's boring. It's just Blake Rudis' photo, and it's all black. I want to incorporate some text into this Blake Rudis photo, um, let's say logo that I have here. Now, the reason why they're on three separate layers is that I like to do all of my text on three separate layers if they're going to be three separate layers as opposed to just pressing enter in between them. And the reason being is that I can move these however I want to. Let's say I want to offset that a little bit. I have the freedom of range to, to do whatever I want with that text layer as opposed to being stuck with um, them being on a, a restricted um, text by pressing the enter, enter key. And you, then you're restricted by spacing, whereas here I can create my own spacing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this uh, texture layer that I have here of some rusted metal that looks like it's been beat up by some salt water and I'm gonna move it onto this text background so I'm gonna press the shift key while I have the move tool selected you can press V for move I'm gonna move it right over here on onto this layer um, actually this is in the grayscale so let me go ahead and go to image mode and then go to RGB color uh, so that we don't have a grayscale sorry about that so I'm gonna press that V key and move that right over top and put that above the Blake. So I just grabbed that layer, moved it right up top above Blake. Now, there are many ways you can incorporate a uh, one image into another image. And the easiest way to do it is with a clipping mask. You can either right click on this and go create clipping mask, or you can press Alt or Option in between the two layers and it will give you this option to, it's like a square with an arrow pointing down. That square with the arrow, arrow pointing down means that you're telling this layer above to only fit in the layer below and only the layer below, period. And um, this is the power of the clipping mask. So now if I press Alt or Option in between there, that uh, texture layer only fits in the Blake text. The great thing about that, the reason why I like these clipping masks so much is that I can press V to move it and I can move just that uh, texture around without having to move anything else. So it gives you a lot of power and a lot of freedom. So I like where it is right there, kind of like a, a little offset pock marks there. Now the next thing I'm going to do is just click on uh, this texture layer and do the same thing. Just press V for move and move that right over top on top of um, the rudis. Now the thing is it, it automatically defaulted me to go above the other layer because that's the layer that I had selected before I moved it over. So if I press Alt or Option, I can release that clipping mask. I can also right click and say release clipping mask. And again, clipping mask is just a fancy word for put this in this. So put whatever's on top into whatever's below. And I can move that interchangeably however I see fit. I kind of like that right there. Just kind of give it that splash going over to the right like that. And then I can do the same thing for this one. I can press V to move this and bring it right over on top. Uh, it defaulted to go on top of that layer, so I can just grab that layer and go right on top of photo. Press Alt or Option and put that clipping mask inside photo at the bottom, and I can move that around too. So I kind of like what's going on there. The one thing I don't like is that um, the 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 uh, font looks kind of the text looks kind of boring now because it's kind of like a smorgasbord of stuff what it needs is it needs some effects so I can double click anywhere over here and go into the layer effects I can create a bevel and emboss and that's what I'm gonna do just a, 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 a looks like my effects are turned off so I've already done it before but here is my bevel and emboss just created a very simple bevel and emboss and then also went to the drop shadow and created a very simple drop shadow but I think I want to lower the opacity on that drop shadow a little bit now, you don't have to go in and write things down that you did in the one before. What you can do is you can actually right click on these effects and go to copy layer style. And then for Brutus, you can click on that layer and then control or command click on photo and then right click them and put paste layer style. So now all of that layer style is in there.
So those are clipping masks and then some other things you can do with the effects. So I'm going to go ahead and hide these effects real quick. Now what I want to do is show you masking. So how a mask works is anything you paint in black will make it disappear. Anything you paint in white will make it come back. Now when you go into the mask it should default you to black and white. Um, so I'm going to click right here. So I'm on this uh, texture layer on the top. If I click this mask you're not going to see anything happen. All it's doing is setting up a palette on the right hand side for me to do something with. And basically it looks like a new layer but it's a layer mask thumbnail is what it is. So I can uh, press, uh, it, right now it's got my colors as gray and black. I want those to go back to the default black and white. So if I press D, that will default them back. So now it's on my white brush. If I were to paint with white, it's not going to do anything. But if I were to switch those by pressing X, which is the same thing as doing, as doing this in your palette switcher, I can switch that over to black. And when I paint, I'm just going to do a splash right across here. So that splash right across, you see it makes that texture disappear and show what's going on underneath. So if I click on this text layer and change that from black to say, I don't know, bright yellow, it's showing what's underneath. Now I don't like it as bright yellow, I'm just going to go back to black and call it good. So another thing with masks is that a mask can work uh, independently. See how it's linked here? What that means is that as you move this layer, that mask will stay by itself um, so that you're moving that texture within that mask. But if you unclick that link, you can actually move the mask independently. So say you make that splash and you don't like where it was, you can just move that mask independently. But if you want that mask to move with the texture layer, make sure you link them back up. Another cool thing with masks is that if you write, uh, if you press the um, the forward slash key that's right next to your right bracket key, that will give you a um, what's called a quick mask to show you that all the stuff that's in red is what's going to be left out. You can go ahead and click off of that by hitting that forward slash key. You can also press shift and click on that mask and that will make that mask um, disappear uh, for, the, for a temporary time but still keep the mask so you can see what your mask looks like on and off of there. Another the cool thing that you can do with masking is you can invert it immediately. So if I like what's going on with this mask but I want um, the, the top of the Blake to, to be black and then the rest of it to be an image, I can press Control I. That immediately inverts that layer mask. So I'm going to flip that back and show you something else that's really cool. Now let's say I want that splash. I like that splash, but I want that splash to continue right through Rudis as I just painted. So if I press Alt or Option on that mask, I can drag it right on top of that other one. And now you see that that continuation has happened because I've duplicated that mask on top of the other one very quickly by pressing Alt or Option, clicking that mask, and dragging it down. So that is a masking and clipping mask in a nutshell on um, text layers. Now let's see how this has some practical application on something like um, a photograph, for instance. Now in this photograph, I don't really like what's going on with the foreground. Let's say I want that foreground to be a little bit darker. What I can do is I can duplicate this layer by pressing Command or Control J. And then I'm going to just do a really quick, easy mask with the quick selection tool and select out that foreground dirty nasty grass area and it's just a very liberal selection uh, let me get rid of this concrete real quick let's say I want to make that a little bit darker and one of the best tricks to use is the the curves adjustment tool uh, well first let me make the mask anything that I have selected here now you see I have this foreground area selected if I have that selected and I go create mask it's going to create a mask for me of what I already have selected so let me deselect my background so you can see that so there's my mask one of the things that you want to do with that mask so because it has such these hard edges is you want to click on that mask and go into its individual properties and then you can lower it you can feather that so that there's a nice transition from uh, area of, of unmasked to mask all right, so now I'm going to click on that background again so you can see the whole image. So if I want to darken that area up a little bit, I can go to an, create a new adjustment layer and go to Curves. So now I'm going to create that clipping mask. 
press Alt or Option in between. This is going to tell this curve adjustment to only affect what's going on underneath it, which would be the foreground that we just selected. So here we're getting a little bit more advanced than just the text layer. The text layer is just an easy way to see this as a representation. But now, if I make an adjustment to that curve, it's only going to affect the area right below it. Now, if I were to undo and release that clipping mask, look what happens. It does it to the entire photograph. I don't want that. I just want it to the layer that's right below it. Again, if we wanted to see how our mask is affecting our photograph, we can do that quick mask to see what's being affected and what's not being affected. And if we don't want that to be there, we can do our temporary release of the mask. And when we temporarily release the mask like that, you'll see that now the curve adjustment is applied to everything because this is a direct copy of the background. And as you're looking at it right now, it te technically does not have a mask because we've temporarily disabled it. So if you press and hold shift and click on that, it will bring it back. So that it pretty much concludes um, all the stuff that you're going to need to know to just jump right into masks and clipping masks. Again, I'm Blake Rudis with EverydayHDR.com and HDRInsider.com. If you like this tutorial and you want more, um, I do full length uh, tutorials on hdrinsider.com. Now that is a paid subscription website, but it's only $20 a year or $1.99 a month, however you prefer to pay. I want to make it affordable so people can enjoy and work on their photographs professionally. Again, Blake Rudis here. Have a great weekend and play with these masks, clip, these clipping masks and these regular masks and just get yourself better at Photoshop. Have a great one. Thank you.